Welcome to List Off. I'm Ozzy. And I'm Nat. And this week, we'll be counting down our top five fizzy drinks. Yeah, fizzy drinks, carbonated soft beverages, drinks. soft drinks, pop. 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 That's the best description if you're in the UK, I would say. Oh, yeah. We used to go to uh, a chip shop in Cumbria, where I'm from, and we used to go there every time we went there on the first night we'd arrive. And their drinks were exclusively known as pop and in on the menu, pop, and then a list of drinks. Great description, pop. Yeah, I don't feel like I can pull pop off because I'm not, I don't have enough Northern heritage. Um, you know, my you know, mum's Northern, but I think she's been in London too long now to have passed on pop as a thing. Yeah. But yeah, basically, you, 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 you dissolved carbon dioxide in water. Um, I've done my history slightly here. The thing being, right, carbon dioxide mm -hmm. is only weakly soluble in water. Therefore, it separates into a gas when the pressure is released. So I kind okay. of knew that, but I've never read it in such clear terms. 1767, Englishman Joseph Priestley first discovered a method of infusing water with carbon dioxide to make carbonated water. And uh, it was the major defining moment of soft drinks. Since then... Jons Jakob Basilius, was a Swedish, added mm -hmm. flavors like spices, juices, and wine in the late 18th century. It's quite, I think this is, I'm quite impressed by how long ago this is. Johann Jakob Schrepper developed a similar process to manufacture carbonated mineral water at the same time. He founded the, founded the Schweppes Company in Geneva in 1783, moved to London in 1792, because I guess that would have been the heart of things. Got one of his early customers for his, uh, Fizzy water was uh, Darwin. According to this, he uh, got a royal warrant from King William the Fourth. You know, so that they still have, I think. They start adding flavouring in early in the nineteenth century. For the Great Exhibition of eighteen fifty one in London, Schweppes was designated the official drink supplier. So this is like what we have now. Oh, okay, like, you know, like yeah. Coca Cola will be like the drink of the Olympics and that kind of thing. As I thought far you back meant, as 1851. For a second, I thought you meant that at a great exhibition, people were like, look at this, like fizzes up. And that would be like one of the big exhibitions. There, was, like showing a, them. there was a Schweppes soda water fountain situated directly at the entrance of the great exhibition. That and must have been mind blowing for people. They sold more than a million bottles of lemonade, ginger beer, seltzer water, and soda water. Mm -hmm. That also suggests, of course, soda water. Of course, you think soda water is carbonated. Because I was thinking that, would you count uh, a bottle of Perrier, not in my list, spoilers, uh, or something as a as a fizzy soft drink? I guess you ought to. It, it's the it's like the vanilla, you know. It's a bit to me. Mm. That's a bit like saying, "What's your favorite pizza toppings?" None. You know, yeah. like that's not. It's your basic really pizza until you've added some, at least some tomato and cheese on top. Yeah. And of course, yeah, soda water is fizzy water. That's, uh, you know, makes sense. Makes sense. And then the problem, so in the next bit of the history, right, the problem that they had um, was that they, you needed all this pressure to stop the uh, the uh, carbon dioxide to come back out of the water, right? So in America, they couldn't get the hang of the bottling. So that's why in America, they always had those soda fountains. That was the thing that you got fizzy water in was the soda fountains, right? You know that you think of from like i don't know bugs in malone it's kind of like yes, yes prohibition yes. era so that was the thing there whereas in the uk and in europe they worked out how to make really good bottles for containing high pressure and hiram dodd hiram cod devised a patented bottling machine while working at a small mineral waterworks in caledonia road islington in 1870 that's that's my oh, neck wow. of the woods on the Cali Road. Bottle. On the Cali Road, his cod neck bottle was designed to enclose a marble and a rubber washer in the neck. It's great stuff. There you go. That is the thing, isn't it? America, that's one of the things you would find in an American drugstore, yeah. which they kind of talk about, like, which isn't the same as a chemist here, but I always assumed it was. But they're like, hey, I'm going to a drugstore to get myself some comic books and some ice cream sundaes. It's all yeah. like that. It's like, what? What are you selling your chemists? No, yeah, that's all that where they like have there. A, a corner shop, but yeah. without the newspapers. I oh, know you can't get the newspapers. No, you get the newspapers out of a box in the street. America, it's magic. What a place. final bit of my history: six packs 
and uh, vending machines were introduced in the 1920s and then cans in the later half of the 20th century. So that gets to where we are now. Sure. But sales are on the decline in the, uh, in the kind of uh, developed countries on the increase in the, in the developing world, but sales peaked in like the nineties for America and Europe and the UK. I wonder what the causes of this. As, as people were getting more health conscious and trying to have less sugar. Gotcha. It's going gotcha. down. But you think if we buy quite a lot of it in this country, America annual consumption, annual average consumption is uh -huh. 153 liters of fizzy drinks per, 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 per person. person. Right? Yeah, otherwise it's spread that's, out across the country. It's not so much. more than twice what it is in the UK. Amazing. Deeply yeah. committed to it. Of course, fictionally as well, I believe, um, in the film Young Einstein with Yahoo Sirius, I think he splits the atom and uh, one of the things, he splits the atom, I think, within water and creates carbonated soft drinks. He, that's, he creates I think that's pop. definitely much uh, science fiction. Yeah, than, yeah. Uh, so apparently that's not fact. true, according to what you're telling me. Yeah, um, and what, what about your own consumption of carbonated soft drinks? You're a big carbonated soft drink fan? Um, I was, but my consumption peaked about 10 years ago. Hmm. And when I was trying to be a bit healthier and have various crappy health things, it, I found it quite an easy thing to knock on the head as opposed to chocolate, which I can't live without. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I found like, yeah, it was quite an easy thing to get rid of. But when, when I worked in the record shop, you know, 10 years ago, next door, literally next door was a really nice news agent with really nice people running it and a really nice family that run it. They still run it. Um, and they, that was at the time when Iron Brew and were doing like three for a pound cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would hit that three for a pound up like every day, you know, <laughs> and have them in the fridge because we had the fridge at work. So I was drinking a lot of fizzy drinks at that point. That's probably my peak. Um, yeah, I, I would say something that differentiates you from me as well is that you don't really drink hot drinks, do you? So in a day, I would probably have teas and coffees and things. Whereas yeah. you don't or you don't really indulge. No, it's just it's just it's just water, soft drinks or hard drinks for me. You know, that's the only that's the only three that I really have or, or every year or so oh, I have a coffee every what? year yeah what a day this what a day. probably the worst day of the year that's why i'm a, that's why i'm having a coffee <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like you know zero sleep something like that so does it have a real effect on you then i you can honest. have a coffee now about half an hour before i go to bed and i'll still yeah, sleep no like I, I can't even take it man it's like it's like shooting heroin in your eyeball i think it's not mm. not something i can really manage but I've tested right. out my soft drink skills this week, refreshing my uh, my preferences, and I can still drink them just fine. Thanks. Yeah. I think I think um, like I do my list, and I I feel like this is the kind of one which it's another list that I think it feels controversial. My list. We'll see how it is when compared to yours. I feel like it feels like I'm trying to be edgy or something with my soft drink choices. Like it's the, uh, you know, like I perceived as, you know, the bad boy of British comedy or something. And I'm doing some of my um, hard hitting, uh, triggered much snowflakes with my, uh, with my choices. I think they're going to be some controversial things that'll upset people. Are you just uh, laying the also... groundwork for not being accused of just having bad taste? Well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Mine are, mine are, I think, are of, uh, oh, but what one, I would say, actually, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I think it's a kind of interesting list. And I also feel like it's a list that I've made, but I feel like is the most built on clay. Like, I fully expect to see some um, listener choices that I'm going to go, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. I fully expect to be found out in, in indeed. And indeed you may well be saying things that I will be like, yeah, I mean, that's miles better than what I've put, but it today is tough to find a news agent that you can walk into and get the full range. Oh yeah. You know, like, so yeah, it's hard to get the full refresher of what do you really like? <laughs>
Right. My number five mm-hmm. is Fanta Limon or Lemon Fanta, as it's known now. Um, but it used to be something you'd only get on holiday in the Mediterranean. Yes. That was my experience of it, right? And you get Fanta Limon, and because you were on holiday, it was great, you know? And if you didn't, you know, if you, it was so refreshing, you know, definitely have it on ice. You know, you, you're on holiday, you're in a hotel, you're in a place, you've got, you've got a little fridge, you can, you know, you've got your ice, you stick your Fanta Lemon in the fridge, you can buy a big bottle, brilliant, they serve it in every restaurant, or whatever, just love it on holiday. I love it. We, when we go to Greece, Fanta Limon, I'd never drink it at home. I never drink it in the UK. I, I would swear that it's a different recipe, but I bet it's not. It's just that you're not on holiday, so everything doesn't taste great. And actually, it's not that great of a drink. But when you're on holiday, Fanta Limon, absolutely love it. And I tried to find out the history of Fanta Limon. Can't be done. Can't find out anything about it. The history of Fanta is bizarre. Like Fanta, did you know about the Fanta? It, I know there's some sort of, at some point, there's some sort of Nazi occupied Fanta in there or something. No, it's not that. It's, it's, it's <laughs> the Coca Cola company, Coca Cola GmbH, um, you know, the German wing of Coca Cola. When, when, when the Second World War was going on, they couldn't get the syrup from America and they uh, okay. couldn't, they couldn't continue to operate as an American company under under nazi rule so they they uh they set up as a separate company they brainstormed for a drink that they could make out of local ingredients smushed a load of fruit and berries and stuff in and came up with the name fanta from fantasy imagination in german and uh launched this drink and it was a great success and uh they used this same kind of uh idea for fanta around europe and they'd have and around the world where they'd, 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 they what can you make? What fizzy drink can you make out of your local ingredients? So Orange Fanta started in in Naples, in Italy in 1955, because they had local oranges. So they were like, we make this orange drink. So the original Fanta was like a weird taste. Then there was Dutch Fanta, which had elderberries in it. Sounds quite good. But when the war was over, Coca-Cola just took the factory back and we're like, yeah, Fanta's ours now. Like, you know, you're, it was kind oh, of, right, like a, yeah. it was kind of a sham that they were a separate company. They weren't, they were, ah, it was the same guy I who see. ran it before. It, it was kind of profiting from, yeah, from the, from the Nazi stuff. And yeah, it was, so it's pretty shady. I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that Fanta still is owned by the Coca-Cola company. I think, um, it's still part yeah, very of that. Much, whereas, yeah. Tango is owned by Pepsi. Is that right? It's those guys, the guys who own. I believe so. But what happened to Sunkist? Sunkist. Oh yeah. Who was is Sunkist? Sprite, I think, is Pepsi, and Seven Up is Coca Cola. They're all no, split. The other up, way right? around. Other way around. Oh, it is the other way around. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah, there is. There is that. When I was a kid, Fanta was um, like the branding of Fanta was that it was like a mickey mouse endorsed drink as well do you remember yeah mickey mouse used to be on all the all the fanta cans i don't know so i always thought it was something disney-ish and also like you say fanta is almost like fantasia as well i didn't know if there was some sort of connection but it was a it was a, not like a it wasn't like a sort of tie-in thing like it was promoting something it was like mickey mouse was on the can mm. At, at, like and was for years and years yeah. you know it was like uh it did seem to have some sort of mickey mouse branding on it uh that's the orange fanta of course yeah um i am uh a big fanta fan um i have to have a fanta whenever i go to pizza express i can't not have a fanta because it's <laughs> on the menu true. that's not true i've seen you definitely just have a peroni not a, not a Fanta. That's true. I might sometimes have a Peroni Nestro Zero bottle, but quite often I'll have a Fanta because I'm always, I always love that it's on the menu as Fanta and no other place in uh, the UK. Can you just buy a nice glass bottle of Fanta, which I guess is another thing we'll probably come on to the mm-hmm. best way to serve a soft drink. I think glass bottle, like I think all pop tastes better out of a glass bottle. I just think there's something about it which is special. 
Um, yeah. what, would you favor a a straw in a glass bottle, or would you like? To... No, no, I I like to drink it like um, I'm That's an American who runs a who runs a garage, and when I say a garage, I mean a garage. A garage. No, you mean and. A... A gas station. And like a, pe- a gas station, yeah, a gas station attendant, maybe with a uh, packet of cigarettes rolled up to my uh, T-shirt sleeve. That's that's how I uh, like to roll. Um, drinking a bottle of Coke, which I'll snap off in the uh, the thing that's outside the, uh, you know, they have the bottle top the opener on the, on the fridge. Yeah, oh, I love yeah. this stuff. Um, and I live in a motel that outside <laughs> is got... Um, ice in a in an ice box the shared ice box do you yeah, stay up all like night on amphetamines yeah and wearing bobby socks dragsters you bet yeah. uh when a um with a, a girl in a, a sort of puffy uh puffy dress uh drops her arm me and the pal i'm drag racing with set off at top dart and we race each other in our big cars. That's your life. That's my life. That's my. That's the life I lead. That's the life you lead when you drink a Fanta in a glass bottle in Pizza Express. Yeah, in London. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I have a sloppy Giuseppe, um, <laughs> or a Loren. Yeah. But that's, that's not. We're not doing top five Pizza Express. Pizza Express menu items. I'm not sure I get yet. to five. Yeah. Or, yeah. But that's one for the future. Bit of a preview. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the lemon Fanta, I think, is particularly good. And if I'm honest with myself, is probably, if not better, is definitely neck and neck with the orange. And I am a fan of the orange Fanta. Uh, it's better than than its uh, Pepsi equivalent. It's way better than a Tango is a Fanta um, for my money. And a lemon Fanta, I think, is quite special. I think lemon Fanta's first uh, came into being when I think I was in the sixth form at school, and I think when they came out, I would I would probably have a lemon Fanta a day in that kind of era. In um, the summer, yeah, in the summer, I'd probably have some uh, chips and cheese in my school canteen for my lunch or something. And, uh, and a lemon, lemon Fanta. Fanta. I don't. That's not. That sounds like a recipe for indigestion. Oh yeah, I'm but sure it's it's what it's what I ate when I was uh, sixteen, seventeen. That was my uh, go-to. That was just a staple diet. <laughs> What's your number five? <laughs> we feel like we're going off topic. My number five is one which I first had, I think, in the summer that uh, I went between primary school and secondary school and I'd go to an adventure playground uh, in the school holidays um, and there was a shop near the adventure playground and someone said to me there's a shop over there and it sells a drink and it's uh, uh, a drink which is branded so it's a soft drink in a can but it's hubba bubba like the uh, like the bubble gum and I was like no way no way and I went and couldn't believe my eyes when, of course, there was a Hubba Bubba drink. And it blew my mind that it tasted exactly like a Hubba Bubba. And then, and it was always like, it was always a rare shop that did them. Yeah, like, I think, I think a lot of the problem with whether sweets and fizzy pop catch on is often a distribution problem. Mm-hmm. If you could get it into all the shops, they would take off. Like the kids would would have gone for them, hmm. uh, and it was a great drink for that because it was a real like, it felt like um, alchemy, science or something because they really had nailed the experience of um, uh, what it's like to chew bubble gum. That taste, it's like the thing in. Um, I always think of it like that bit in. Uh, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, where they have the bubble gum, but it's like a roast dinner and things. And it's like, three, oh, yeah, it's three like three courses or whatever. Yeah, yeah, three courses of, yeah. And it's like, that's what, like, the guys at Hubba Bubba, I felt, were like, they were on their way to be doing that, like uh, like the it, Wonka Chocolate Factory. It was Wonka Science. It was Wonka Science, full on Wonka Science. And it was mind blowing. I suspect now 
that it's not like as something that went um that was around for a little while and then went away that i'm sure if it was still available and widely available I'd probably drop in on it occasionally, but I wouldn't be getting it regularly. But I do think like my memory of that Hubba Bubba drink was something really special in that pink can yeah, with the big sort of bubbles on the side of it and things. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely kind of hot pink, hot pink can. I think you're can. right. The fact that it was a rare spot in a shop would made it more exciting. Yeah. Yeah, um, it might even have been like a few a few pence more even, but it was a real like, wow. But that's wow. why I, I'm drinking as we speak a can of Bar's bubblegum yeah. uh, pop, which um, is very much a sort of poor man's uh, hubba yeah. bubba drink. Yeah. And, but it's equally quite rare, and that's why I bought it today, because I was like, yeah, yeah, you don't see them everywhere. I'm going to grab one of them. What colour is it? That's a blue, isn't that? A blue colour? I don't know. I don't have a good way of checking. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I think it's got most of its color taken out now because bar have been stung with a lot of, uh, sugar tax food. Yeah. But, but also food coloring laws. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mind a bars it's pretty bubble much gum drink. Yeah. It's, um, I, and it is, it's a quite a nice, um, hit to get, a uh, a nostalgic Proustian rush of a Hubba Bubba drink, but it isn't quite the same. Um, which I say that with full respect to bars. Um, I'm not knocking bars at all. And for a can, which is probably 40, 45, 49, 49p. 49p. Great 49p. taste, 49p. You cannot beat bars for value in the can department. No. Um, a the great company. Best value. Fully. Bar none. Yeah, absolutely. That should be a, we should, we should sell that to bars. Um, a great company, fully supported them. But yeah, for that reason, it's sort of, the, it's sort of the, the Hubba Bubba drink is pretty much the first one I thought of in a kind of, well, of course, I can't not do it. Um, even though it's a, a discontinued brand because I have such a kind of strong associations of my first ever taste of the hubba bubba drink so it's both wow. of us i i want my fanta limo on, on holiday and you want your hubba bubba drink while swinging from a from a venture a tire band. probably on uh and getting a splinter off some wood uh that's been repurposed into some sort of uh uh swing or uh a little roundabout bit of rope or something climbing rope beautiful stuff. Uh, beautiful stuff Love it. My number four oh! is a Shandy Bass, or as I'd call it, a Bass Shandy. I don't know. I never made sense of how it was called Shandy Bass when it's a Bass Shandy. If you tried to order one in a pub, you would have to ask for a Bass Shandy. Yeah. So why was the can distributed as Shandy Bass? Anyway. It's not, it was 0.5% alcohol by volume, which was so exciting when you were a kid. You could just go and buy a can with alcohol in it. It was 0.5% alcohol, but it had alcohol in it. And you could be like, mm, I can really taste it. If I drank like 150 of these, I might get drunk, you know? <laughs> that feeling was great. And it just really had that kind of like illicit feeling, like having a shandy, like like a yeah. grown up, you know? But like, yeah. <laughs> And really refreshing on a hot day, I think. Weirdly savory tasting. Like, yes, it's it was more. I think because of what a bass, you know, beer tastes like, which is not very nice. Um, I don't even know. Do you still get bass beer in pubs? No, only in cans. Right? No, yeah, don't think so. Um, I was, you know, I was reading about the Bass Brewery, founded 1777 by William Bass in Burton upon Trent, Staffordshire. Bass Pale Ale was once the highest selling beer in the UK. Uh, by 1877, 100 years, it had become the biggest brewery in the world. And uh, its, ex its a pale ale was exported throughout the British Empire, and the Red Triangle logo became the UK's first registered trademark. And they're just not relevant now. It's just a cheap, nasty beer brand now. Like you're just getting cans in news agents mm. and uh it's a shame because I, I love and the shandy is gone you can't get bass shandy shandy bass in it oh really 
It was withdrawn in 2018. It was introduced in 1972. It was made by Britvic, you know, using mm-hmm. Bass beer, but made by Britvic. And yeah, discontinued in 2018. And I had a hunch that it wasn't around anymore because I really haven't seen one. Well, I mean, I guess we've lost a couple of years pandemic wise, but I feel like I've had a Bash Andy uh, fairly recently, but I guess it was 2018. You know, Did you I read the said bottom? Was... See what the date was on it? Might have been <laughs> dead stock. Um, that could have been. Did it massively fluff up. up in your hand? Was the, <laughs> was the lid already sort of bulbed over? <laughs> no, I just, well, it, it's a nice drink. It's again, it's a, it's a drink that I would, it's not as nice in a way as a shandy in a, or, or a lager top. I'd love to have a lager top, you know, a bit refreshing, but it's a beer. A shandy mm. in a pub is too sweet, horrid, but that's the, mm. the, the shandy bass was somewhere in between taste wise. Obviously, yeah. it had very little beer in it or yes. alcohol in it, but it had a, a slightly more savory flavor, not quite so sweet. Very yes, nice. yeah. No, I think that's a good point. I mean, at this point, I should say that my number four is kind of very similar, that I was going to thinking of having the Bash Shandy, but what I kind of went for was the more uh, pop-oriented top deck, which is the same principle yeah. of a Shandy. Again, I think, yeah, 0.05 yeah. alcohol same reasons feels very illicit almost like you expect someone's gonna say you can't have this but you can have it yeah no do one you have, cares do you have any id <laughs> um but yeah very much so i think there is you're right about the lager top i think on a very hot summer's day it is often what you kind of it's the right compromise because often what you want when people go oh i really like a pint of lager i always think no, no, what you kind of want is a pint of lager plus a, a pint of water. That's what you want first. Yeah. And uh, and I think uh, a lager top does take the edge off that. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a first drink. It's like a hot day, yeah. walk in the pub, get your lager top, walk out of the yeah. pub because it's too hot, drink it, and then you're going to have a lager afterwards. But you're, mm. having the, you're having that first. I think I think for me, like it really does feel like a gateway drug. And I think any kind of <laughs> shandy, like I, I think any kind of like any beer I've had is almost like what I'm having is like a poor man shandy. Like I think, you know, I'll, I'll happily drink it, but I feel like in a way what I'd rather have is a shandy all the time. But it's almost the the pub drink, which is most like having a top deck is having a beer. So it's like it's it's fine, but in in reality, I'd 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 prefer to have a top deck. I think um, any day of the week than a beer, uh, than a, than an actual beer. You're crazy, man. Uh, Maybe one, but you wouldn't prefer to have like six in an evening. Oh no, probably not. Probably not. That's terrible. Uh, but like, I feel like I just mean like as a kid, I think like that's the thing I've held on to. So beer for me is still like what I get from a beer is often that bit of like yeah, it's a bit like a shandy yeah you know it's more like it goes that way i do um but yeah, i do enjoy that i do enjoy uh and i would have said i still enjoy a, a shandy bass you know i feel like that is something i still would get it's still on my list of go-to's i know top deck i thought shandy bass was really holding out on the uh you know they were holding the fort and uh no they've gone rip but they've rip i'm afraid they've gone the way of the rice core while we're talking shandies i just should mention that you know in the in the germanic world they have the radler um which is like a kind of cloudy cloudy shandy it's i don't i think it's i think it's cloudy lemonade mixed with mixed with beer and it may even be mixed with vice beer it's gross i hate it and people will give them to you i'm just going to look at the exact i might like this i quite like having a, a blue moon uh lager perhaps uh, sorry a uh, black pale pale ale with uh, you have a bottle of that in a pint glass and if you fill it up with lemonade so you probably get a quarter lemonade i guess you might and like, that's a great that's a great one you might like a radler radler it says is a effervescent multi-blend made of wheat or lager beer combined with grapefruit limes oranges or classical lemonade Ugh, i really don't like it but gross and yeah, sometimes I get given them in Germany or something or in Austria and it's like, no, 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 because it's not refreshing. It's it's really, yeah, cloying. I don't like it. Gross. 
coming out. I like out. the sound of it. I like the sound of it. I'll get you some. Get you some. But you don't want one with like grapefruit. Ugh. No, 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 no. Keep it lemon. Keep it lemon. Keep it lemon, guys. My number three is a Lucozade. Original flavor Lucozade. Uh, created as Glucozade in the UK in 1927 by Newcastle pharmacist William Walker Hunter. Uh, acquired by Beecham's pharmaceutical company in 1938, and then they sold it as Lucozade, an energy drink for the sick. Its advertising slogan was Lucozade AIDS Recovery. Um, it was sold mostly in pharmacies up until the mid 1990s. I, I was thinking, like, yeah, that's true. It really was. And it's, yeah, like my mum used to get me, my mum had Lucozade when she was sick as a kid. Yeah. And so she'd get it for me. So if you were sick, it'd be like, here you go, I've got you a, you know, glass bottle of Lucozade, maybe a big one, you know? Yes. And that was like fantastic. That really take the edge off being ill. And I'm, knowing me, I probably wasn't even ill really. So it was pretty great all around and crazy sugary. You know, I think it has something like 40% more sugar than Coke or whatever. You know, it's, it's, it's really sugary and, you know, the clues in the name, like it says, it still says on it, like the glucose drink. And it's like, that just means sugar. That's, <laughs> that's not that big of a deal, you know, but, um, I really love the flavor. It's a weird flavor. You really struggle to say what it tasted of. It's such a weird flavor, such an odd drink. I think a Lucas aid. And I don't know, like I had it so rarely, I think because like it was something you'd have in your ill mm. and I never got it. I think because like in my mind, I'd associate it being like a medicine. And do you remember they did the LucasAid sweets that were almost like tablets, yeah. like sort of dissolvable, big. They almost now look like um, things you put in dishwashers, you know, those like yeah. dishwasher tabs or something. They're like, they're like those. They're so big, they look like they should be dissolved in a in a drink. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? But yeah. they weren't. You put them in your mouth, and then yeah, I used to I used to have a pack of them on me when I was playing basketball and stuff. When I was doing sports all the time as a kid, it was but I mean. It, it, this, it was total non-science, you know, mm. just, yeah, sh you need sugar at times when your body yeah. needs sugar, but that's it. Like <laughs> there's nothing else to it. Right. I feel like I regularly will have a bottle of the Lucas, the orange Lucasade sport in a way that I go, I don't, I'm not doing any sport. What's this for? <laughs> what is, what am I doing? Like, am I, am I like, what, what am I giving my body? Which is telling my body's going, I mean, what do you need this for? What? what well, you're not, you've not done anything, but I'll regularly have it as a, a drink. That's, Very that's refreshing just, drink. Oh, I can't stand the orange oh. one. It's got to be original all the way. And again, like it's that was one which is glass bottle. When they brought out the plastic bottles, it was a serious step. Oh, yeah. I remember the glass bottles were lethal. You remember the way they were made? Like the small, the mm. sort of single portion ones were like so solid. Like if you smashed it on a wall, it wouldn't break. You know what I mean? They were just, it was like a cosh. And I remember like people having fights and hitting each other over the head of a Lucozade bottle outside school and just being like absolutely lethal truncheon. Um, the glass bottles were amazing. And then it's never quite, it's never quite tasted the same for me in, uh, in the plastic bottle. If you were going to have it post glass bottle, I think that you're better off having a can. Um, yeah. And uh, now they're in funny little thin cans as if they're an energy drink, which I guess they are the first energy drink of those sorts yeah. in a lot of ways. Well, not, not, not the first, as I'll say later, but, you know, they, 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 they're kind of caught. They're trying to now market it as if it's like, you know, we, we, we're like the original mon monster or something. Um, yeah, like I will, I will still get a LucasAid because, but essentially what I'm buying it for is to sort of reacquaint myself with whatever that taste is like it's just that like what i did yeah yeah it's that isn't it it's that sort it's, of i don't quite... i don't dislike it by any means but it's an it's a really odd taste now, i had one today to 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 prep myself and you have to remember that all of them taste different now because they've all had to get under this maximum sugar content level so they it has changed how they taste a bit but yeah even then today i was just like it's, if it tastes like anything, it tastes a bit like cherry, a little bit. Okay, but not like anything. Like it's just it just tastes like Lucozade, and it just tastes like being sick, being under your duvet on the sofa, by the mm. radiator, watching daytime TV, 
you know? Yeah. Being like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit better. Maybe I'll just have a bit more Lucozade, you know? <laughs> and just it, it, GlaxoSmithKline, who ended up owning it after Beecham's when they merged, they sold Lucozade and Ribena to Japanese drinks conglomerate Suntory in 2013 for 1.35 billion pounds. Well, yeah, you wouldn't take anything less. Lucozade and big... Ribena are two drinks. And one of the things I like most about Lucozade as a kid growing up was, you know, when you left London by the West and you used to go out right. on, the, on the M4 and you go past the sign in Brentford where the, where the, I think the factory had been and stuff. And it was like, yeah, the, 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 the animated Lucozade sign bottle pouring. And that was like, I think that was my favorite thing about West London. It may still be my favorite thing about West <laughs> London, even though it's been gone for in like uh, mm -hmm. 16, 17 years. Love that. Absolutely love that. Uh, I should point out, of course, that we mentioned the Lucasade Spore Orange. That's a flat drink and it isn't, it wouldn't be eligible on this list anyway. No, it's not that way. Um, battle it out with fruit juices or something. Yeah. Right. Bean is an interesting one. I can understand why Lucasade is owned by GlaxoSmithKline and was, uh, was, uh, owned by Beecham's, given it does have a medicinal value. Right, Bina doesn't feel like it belongs in, in with those guys. I would have thought it'd be more of a like, a, it's more of a competition for your Robinsons. I haven't done my Ribena research because it, again, doesn't it's not, it's not appropriate. this list. So I can't tell you what its corporate takeover history was. But GlaxoSmithKline, sure. you know, they just they just own stuff and sell stuff. And it's, I wouldn't worry about it. There's not going to be any reason to it. Sure. They own a bunch of like biscuits and stuff as well, so hmm. don't let it bother you. Okay, well, uh, it won't keep me up. Thank you. My number three is Kaiser, and yeah. I remember, I remember not enjoying Kaiser when I was a kid. I wasn't really into it. It was in a kind of it was like an occasional drink, and I have a feeling at some point it did change recipe, um, but. Whatever they change it to, I'm all for it. I'm not a nostalgist in this way. I think it's it's much improved. Tizer feels like I'm sure Tizer is as sugary as anything is. It tastes like a drink that's unhealthy, but it also has a very sort of refreshing element to it that makes me. It's probably of all these drinks, it's the one that I I could mistakenly, if I got a two liter bottle, I might mistakenly drink loads of it because it's a bit too refreshing. It's a bit too like water. So you can drink a, an awful lot of it, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fair, but, but I suspect is just as sugary as anything else, but has a really nice. And in fact, I think a lot of the, the my favorite soft drinks are probably the ultra sugary ones. Um, I like it. I also like that it's red in color in that way that it feels like some pop ought to be red. You know, given the yeah, like the we don't of... have we don't have Kool Aid, but that, yeah. it's that it's that kind of red. You've just totally twisted my melon again because, like, I used to love Tizer. I used to have a lot of Tizer, and yeah, you could really wolf it, and yeah. I love the color of it. But when they changed it and they changed the branding, I never drank it again. I didn't like it, and I just never drank it again. And I've forgotten. I've I think I fit. I'd get it occasionally, as I'd probably get all the drinks occasionally as a kid, and would and Tizer was always one I'd be a bit like. But I think whatever they've done in this, you know, you're almost meant to, I meant to say that it's not the same anymore. And maybe to you it isn't. But to me, I think it's a real improvement. I really enjoy a Tizer now. I, I, I will, uh, it'll be one of my uh, go-tos will be a Tizer. And it's a, it's a sort of good, refreshing soft drink, which is probably, um, probably more on this a bit later. But like, um yeah, I think it's it's probably well, it, it's technically my third choice, but uh, more on this as we go on. I just read. I'm just trying to read about Tizer and the 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 the, um, the recipe changes and stuff. But yeah, I don't. I can't. I can't find an exact point where. Uh, I even you know, think they made a big deal about it in in my like in my mind. It was almost like. Uh, Tizer's like Tizer's no good. It might even have gone and come back for a bit. 
as a sort of new rebrand or something. And you can like now get Tizer, different variants of Tizer, which aren't particularly good. It looks tried, like they've I've basically the re- changed the flavor and then gone back to the original about twice. So maybe okay. it is back to the original at the moment. I might have to try some Tizer. I haven't even seen it or thought about it. I guess the package, I, I'm looking at the packaging that it has now. and I'm not even really familiar. I'm like, oh yeah, I have seen that, but I don't, I haven't bought a can of it or a bottle of it in that packaging so i don't even know how long it is yeah it's not hard to find you'll find it you'll find it yeah i just generally i was having a flashback to to um drinking it in uh, the foyer of the uh, leisure center just outside um redditch in the west midlands um (laughs) while uh visiting my mum on an archaeological dig that she was doing she used to do every summer and we if you wanted like a to go and do something like anything you walk to the uh, suburban leisure center and they had you could go and play badminton or have a swim or something but most of all i think i was going there for the vending machines you know because that's healthy that's why you go to a health center isn't it for the vending machines <laughs> and yeah could really uh yeah really remember that sitting there on some like pleather benches yeah. I think for me, like, yeah, certainly after going for a swim, it would always be a can from a vending machine or indeed a hot chocolate, which was a weird, claggy machine hot chocolate or something. That I think what I'd, uh... what I'd have after a swim would be a uh, choc dip. Remember them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Choc dip, the, of little, the little breadsticks that you'd stick in the chocolate. Of course, yeah. That's what I'd favor from a vending machine after a swim. Halcyon days. Really are. My number two is a not obscure one. Mm-hmm. My number two is Pepsi Cola. The world's second favorite cola. Um, <laughs> I like a cola that is Pepsi. If When you go in a shop, when you're in a restaurant or a shop and you go like, oh, I'll just have a Coke, please. And they go, is, is Pepsi okay? I love that question. Is Pepsi okay? And I go, and I always go, Pepsi's even better, or Pepsi's perfect. And I always look at you like, it's fucking weirdo. Like, you know, it's just, you know, no one says that. Most people go, oh, do you know what? Actually, I'll have a Sprite. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I really like Pepsi. I think Pepsi's really refreshing. It's one of these weird things where people who don't like Pepsi say it's too sweet. Oh, it's too sweet. And I think it is sugarier officially by content and coke but um to me it tastes less sweet like coke has this really caramel kind of almost uh caramel is a good word you know cinnamon caramel those are the flavors i get in a Mm -hmm. in a coke right whereas with pepsi to me it has this more uh, enigmatic flavor Mm -hmm. and i find it more refreshing yeah i think caramel is a good word coke your sort of classic Coke is a little bit Mars bar in its um, in its taste, I think. Whereas I think a Pepsi is a bit cleaner. It's got a cleaner it's clean. Taste, that's right. You know, what? I never really drank Pepsi until I was on a basketball camp, a residential basketball camp uh, in Sheffield Hallam University halls. Mm-hmm. Where they, you know, the student halls don't get used in the summer, so we had a bunch of kids in playing basketball, and it was a good basketball camp. It was the most um, most proper one I ever went on it was pretty intense. I think it was a couple of weeks and it was yeah, pretty full on. And there was like, you know, canteen food or something. And there's a load of teenagers. Right. And when we get back to the horse or afterwards, what everyone would do is hit up the uh, vending machine in the, in the halls and order Domino's pizza. Cause they were the only people that would deliver to there or something, or it's just the only thing teenagers wanted. I don't know. And when you're playing, we were playing sport all day, so hard in the summer. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I don't think we ate that much from the canteen because it was not that nice, whatever. And you get back to the thing and you'd have your Pepsi from the vending machine, super cold, like someone had cranked the, the Pepsi machine to too cold, you know, almost frozen. You'd have that. Someone, people would order Domino's pizzas. They turn up on their mopeds, eat the pizza, burn your mouth on the pizza drink the ice cold pepsi and i was from that day on i was just like i love pepsi and domino's pizza i've never really (laughs) had these things before but they're the best 
And again, I don't think they've ever tasted as good either of those things as they did on that week. Yeah. But boy, that was fantastic. And yeah, Pepsi, Pepsi, I can drink no problem, no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. I would have a Pepsi over a Coke, and I, I know because I once did the the Pepsi challenge in the car park of a supermarket when I was a kid, and and did pick Pepsi. Uh, they gave me a classic Coke and a Pepsi, and I had a. That's my favourite. I guess, yeah, I never, but before that, I remember thinking, my thing was always that I can't really tell the difference. And I th I think when I had it, it did just make me go, I guess that's the answer. I guess I prefer a Pepsi. When when side by side, I did pick that. Uh, I think Pepsi is one like, like I think the war between Pepsi and Coke is interesting. And I think mm. we're probably both of an age of uh, when pepsi was the voice of a new generation i think we were part of the new generation and i think often it sort of goes in ebbs and flows and you i think people older than us would be a bit uh, classic coke and the idea that you like pepsi is like um like ridiculous mm. like classic coke feels like it's a bit classic coke feels a little bit sort of hair metal whereas i feel like pepsi is a bit more kind of 80s pop, probably because of Jackson. Yeah, but do you remember who Coke had against Michael Jackson in the in the in the Cola Wars of advertising? Oh no, time? at the same when, time. Yeah, when MJ was doing the Pepsi adverts, Coke had uh, Paula Abdul, which shows you that oh. they were seriously bringing a knife to a gunfight in that bit of the yes, Cola Wars. Like yeah. that, that was seriously under unbalanced. I like that uh, Caleb Bradham uh, developed. Mm -hmm pepsi in 1893 and sold it from his 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 drugstore as brad's drink that, that was <laughs> that was his brand name brad's drink <laughs> and then it was it got called pepsi you know what it's called pepsi uh pepsi dent pepsi it, it, it relieves dyspepsia you know, oh, like, yeah like, uh, yeah i guess so yeah yeah to relieve dyspepsia so, yeah. exactly it's all that sort of stuff so caleb bradham of new Bern, north carolina but yeah, the the Cola Wars and the 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 nineteen seventies to eighties logo, I think, is a top 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 logo. Like for any oh, brands, lovely. that's lovely stuff. That's fantastic. And why they think they need to have some sort of over stylized version yeah. of it now? It's just like, just go back to that classic logo. It's incredible. Well, incredible. we were both in an H and M store the other week, and I pointed out the idea that H and M now sell branded Coca Cola T shirts that you buy. <laughs> And I was yeah. like, what a weird thing that you buy to wear a Coca-Cola T-shirt. You should get people wearing like Coca-Cola baseball caps or something. It's like, mm. oh, okay. But I mean, you know, I guess I'd wear Mind you, mind you, I'd, I I reckon if there was T-shirts for my top two choices, I'd probably have them. There is like, a lot yeah, of right. merch for my number one choice. And I have always said I'd buy it. And I actually haven't because, right. yeah, but I don't know. It's not, I could, it could um, represent other things. You know, I th that's the thing about this list that makes it kind of controversial for me because I'll say now that, that Coke or Pepsi isn't on my list, but I probably will drink Pepsi more than most of the things on my list. But I think it like Pepsi or that kind of cola mm. is a bit like I think it's a, is a bit like coffee and tea. I think it's a bit more like it's there's like a, a level basic. of addiction. There's a bit there's a level oh, of right. addiction to it where you just think. I think there's just like I'll, uh, you just sort of need that stuff, like wherever it is, the caffeine and things. Mm. It's something that's like I'll kind of have it because more of a need than I actually enjoy it. I kind of question how much I like Pepsi. I certainly a very drinkable drink whenever. It's a very nice drink of Pepsi. Um, but like when they do like the Pepsi variants, like when they have like the Coke with lime or Pepsi or that kind of stuff, it's always, I always go, well, you, yeah, when it has like the lime in it, I always go, well, this is to me is technically a better drink. I just go, that's nicer. Nah, nope, nah, nope. Two, ah, no, <laughs> no, no. In, 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 if anybody ever, if I order like a, a Coke or Pepsi in, in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a restaurant or something or cafe, if they ever ask like ice and lemon, I'm a hundred percent like no lemon, please. No lemon. Please, mm. I, I, like I'll take that out. But even if you take it out immediately when they serve you, it it still happened. The lemon is still, still gonna. There. I don't know. I don't want it. It's weird, man. You don't need that. Do you like the ones with vanilla like... in? Yeah, I do. 
I do. You like any old rubbish I'm stuck in there. <laughs> I do. I think that's it. I think Coke in itself, like I would, I would definitely like. I do drink Coke. I had I had some Pepsi earlier this evening. Uh, I'll probably have it more often than not. It's like in a way, I also drink an awful lot of lemonade, some good branded lemonade. Yeah, I do also think that like, but a Seven Up, which also has the lime in it, is better. So it feels like. Well, that can't really be, you know, I do like a lemonade. Mm. But it isn't on my list. Maybe I'll talk about this in when we do our honourable mentions. But I, I am a fan of a lemonade, for sure. I'll talk about it a bit later on. My number two is, again, discontinued in this country, but is the original Mountain Dew. Oh. Um, and I first had that on holiday in Florida. And of course, because it's a different drink that we haven't got, so I, I wanted to try it. And it was like a real, this is something. This is a real game changer. This is crazy. We don't have this. And then for, you know, a few years in the sun, we did have it for a little while. It was about five and years it was or something, a, right? Yeah, probably there's a five-year period where we got it. And I'd have it regularly, and it was always exactly what I wanted. Then if people are thinking, but well, you still get it, you don't get it. What you get now, Mountain Dew is now an energy drink in this country, whereas in the States, you can still buy the um, the um, Regular Mountain energy. Dew yeah, that you always got. And I will occasionally treat myself to a, a can of Mountain Dew in one of those uh, incredibly expensive American sweet shops where I'll pay three pounds for a can of Mountain Dew that will take me probably less than a minute to drink <laughs> because I will. I should but check my I local Tesco because they have, a, they have an American food section, which mm. is just like sweets. Although I've noticed that when you go to those shops now, even though they are the American cans, mm. they have a, they've sort of changed their branding to make it look quite seventies. So I think even in America, Mountain Dew is probably a bit retro. That makes me wonder if, that's kind of on the way out there as no, well. I think it's like almost when well. they're people okay. Buy, in America, it sells in like these huge, like gallon, gallon bottles. People have big, Good. big plastic bottles of it. And also it still sponsors a lot of sports events and stuff. Like if you're watching American sports, they'll have Mountain Dew there as if it's like a sports drink. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like how ice, Lucozade isotonic would be, Lucozade sport would be like gotcha. for, for, um, for sport over here. Definitely mm. still around. Most, most energy drinks are rotten. And I would have hoped the Mountain Dew one, which I've bought on a couple of occasions, thinking, could this even remotely be a bit like Mountain Dew? It's rotten, just like all the others. Horrible drink. It's probably got nothing Bad to drink. do with it. It's probably just a license thing. Yeah. I, I, I really associate Mountain Dew with that late 90s or mid 90s. Um, we had a vending machine at school uh, for a while. I don't know. Probably came in when I was about 13 or something. And it had... Yeah, in the time that it was out, that, that it was there, that you had like Mountain Dew and Tab Clear. Yes. The the gimmick seafood cola in seafood can. And so we, I just drank a lot of these gimmick, sort of what we have felt like gimmick drinks then. Because it was like, no way, if they've got like Mountain Dew and Tab Clear, no way am I going to get like a Coke. You're crazy, you know? Yeah. I'm going to get one of these like crazy, wacky American things. And... um a tap clear was horrid, but I would I just drank loads of them because it was yeah. like see through, it's new, you know. Tab clear had that kind of in a way. I mean, this is controversial as well. I quite like I've got a real fondness for Coke when it goes a bit flat, and I quite liked those old kind of panda pop kind of yeah, panda coke pops, things as well. Roller colas. Yeah, for I quite like a bit of that. Do you like a I'm do you like a supermarket own brand cola? Yeah, I kind of do um that would have been the yeah. first ones that i had as a kid because it would be like probably safe way that we had then it was a safe way up on uh, mm -hmm. stoke newton like that safe way own brand cola would have been the, if we'd had a party and had it, that's what it would have yeah. been you know it wouldn't have been coca-cola and a lot of what i like about it is is that thing where it's almost like cola flavored like yeah. do you remember those do you remember when you could buy those do you remember those tiny silver balls that were sweets and you'd have like a sort of handful of them, but they were just cola flavored. Yeah. Tiny things. Or like and cola they, cubes. That's almost like, yeah, not your, oh God, like, absolutely a cola cube. 
Um, but these were slightly different. Like cola cubes yeah. actually have an edge. They have an edge over these things. Mm. Like Tab Clear isn't really cola cube. Cola cube's quite a good representation of cola. Yeah. Whereas often these things are just sort of like cola flavored. Like when I was talking about bananas versus banana uh, Nesquik series. banana milkshake right. or something. It's that sort of, it's the difference between one or the other. There's a, yeah. and, and, when, and occasionally we'll eat a banana and go, oh no, that's it. That's what they're going for. <laughs> But it's like these cola sweets. That's what Tab Clear always makes me think of. It's like that kind of. It's like they've they've worked out what the cola flavor is, sort of, and they've gone. Can we do that, Clear? Yeah. Can you do something that tastes like Coke? No. No, we can do it like this. We can have a. I guess in America as well, Tab isn't it a regular kind of Coke company? Yeah, they just, it, that was I their one it was. gimmick. I don't know if it still they, is. Yeah. I think by the time Tab Clear came out, it might have been owned by one of the other ones anyway. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. There's got all kinds of brands in America that we don't have as well. Yeah, of course, because that's the joke that uh, took a, you could only work out in hindsight when you watch Back to the Future, because by if you watched it in like 1991, you'd go, oh, I get that joke now. But when it came out, it was one of those jokes that kind of fell flat and I never understood it. And uh, uh, it's when uh, Mighty McFly goes back to the 50s and he goes into the cafe and he goes, the guy asks him if he wants anything. And he goes, yeah, 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 I'll, um, I'll have a tab. And he goes, well, if you want a tab, you got to buy something. And you go, yeah, it's a good, but I remember it was always one of them things like, what does that even mean? <laughs> not, not a cigarette like up north. Oh yeah, yeah, not that, no. not that. It's good. Mountain Dew. Yeah, it's also like the title of Mountain Dew suggests that you are drinking something incredibly refreshing. <laughs> yeah, like really you're having this wholesome. sort of wispy. Yeah, like like it's sort of like elderflower. That would be like a, like an elderflower cordial with a hint in of a, pine in a can. Yeah, would be the kind of thing you'd imagine. If you if I was doing Mountain Dew as a brand yeah. and I created the name, that's the kind of drink I'd be like. That's nah, kind of really yeah. refreshing cordial elderflowery type thing and be quite a nice drink i could probably get a nice can of like an elderflower cordial mix mm -hmm. that'd probably be quite a good drink might uh i might i might have to talk to my uh talk to my people about getting that sorted and my uh billionaires uh, you mean you mean you'd, you'd market it like uh ricola throat sweets yeah. a guy on an alpine guy being like Ricola. yes yes out, it's got that ref like yeah. like when you get one of them soft drinks that's in a can from pret a manger and it's a bit like yeah sort of got a bit of taste to it kind of that's not they're not really like pop but they're like the pret a manger kind of healthy pop yeah it's like a, um, it's although like halfway between flavored water and uh yes and drink although shouts out to their ginger beer which is very nice and it is a subtle ginger beer but that's tasty well done well done pret a manger for once um <laughs> is it my number uh, one yeah. Your number one. Why? My number one is made in Scotland from Girders. It is Iron Brew. I kind of gave the game away earlier by saying I used to drink three cans a day. But um, love an Iron Brew. Love the packaging, especially the classic kind of 80s, 90s look with the bold blue writing. Um, love, the, yes, I love the packaging love the kind of story of it being one one of the only the only three only three brands of fizzy drink have defended their home market against the onslaught of coca-cola right uh inca cola in peru oh who, yeah uh, yeah who have um since signed an exclusive deal with coca-cola where they don't market it outside of peru right uh thumbs up of India, who um, basically replaced Coca Cola when Coca Cola withdraw was withdrawn from India in I think the seventies, and then when they returned, I think they've now bought they've been bought out by Coca Cola in the nineties, right? Um, so only Iron Brew remains as a holdout, very much like Asterix's village in 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 holding out against the Romans. In, in, in the Asterix books, it's like it's like in the opening scenes of Gladiator, where the Roman Empire gets to its meets its 
meets its final extremity, uh, you know, at Hadrian's Wall, and they can't yeah. can't, can't defeat the further. barbarians of Scotland. And it is like that's a real point of pride for Scottish people, both that they have this sort of mm -hmm. this holdout, this um, indomitable drink, and also that it's just incredibly unhealthy, which is obviously... quite right too. Like, and as is obvious to everyone, my number one is also Iron Brew as it is far and away all day long the best fizzy drink you can buy it is the greatest it is one like it's one of those things that in a way when we did flags that could almost be scotland's flag and i'd salute it all day long absolutely orange fantastic silver drink. and blue flag yeah i mean i am brew brilliant makes me proud to be Scottish and I'm not Scottish. I love it. I think it's yeah. something that's such a kind of, I do like you. I think it's such a point of pride in that country. I think it's a great thing to be proud of. Mm. And I, like I say, I'm a big fan of, of the bars label. I love how cheap it is still, um, it's growing up. Cheap, it's not as cheap as it was, but yeah, I mean, no, but still you can't 69 argue. 69 P now. Yeah. P? Yeah. I don't think you can argue and the bottles are like like they're cheap they're still they're still good value 179 i think uh, a two liter it's it's pretty good it's pretty good going uh, the bars um lemonade is a pound two liter yeah. oh yeah all the all the bars other flavor drinks are like 49p and cans yeah so. uh the bar company i mean generally like uh, hats off to them all i think it's like it's such a great export and I think it's, yeah, like I know, of course it's sweet. Of course it's sweeter in the way that what I will say for them, not their fault, but like a diet iron brew, absolutely useless, terrible drink. And iron brew is the best. It's probably the steepest drop off between a regular and a diet of any of the soft drinks. Um, but an iron brew is fantastic. I love... Uh, like I'll end up going to Edinburgh every year. And one of the best things about Edinburgh, um, you know, apart from the castle, whatever, is 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 that you can get iron brew served in every pub and restaurant you go to and you think, well done. And I love it. And it's and I also find that difficult to resist. Like if iron brew is an option, do, do I want anything else or do I want iron brew? Like in scotland i'll probably have one a day because it's like you know like i said before when in rome it's just like it's the place for iron brew and i think like i keep hearing uh billy hines who was on this show he told me a couple that you can now get like in scotland you can get original recipe iron brew from 1901 as one of your options and that just makes me like, oh man, I've got to get up there. They're not and in glass is... bottles though, now, are they? They've have they have ended the glass bottles, haven't they? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's over yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, the can, it's all, it's all in the cans as well. But like, it's still, but it's absolutely is the best. Like, it's as a kid, it was probably always top five. Mm. But like, it would be like I wouldn't be able to to have uh, narrowed it down. But like, mm. as an adult. It was just the more I had it, the more I was like, there's, there's just nothing better than this. There's nothing just... like it. To me, comparing it to the other soft, the other soft drinks to it is like saying, what's your favorite type of white wine? Oh, by the way, you can have champagne as your option. It's like, well, I'm picking champagne then. It, to me, it's like that level of like, yeah, it's, it's not even fair. It's not even a fair contest. Like the, exactly. if you get a can of iron brew, right, and pop the top, and then drink it as fast as you can while it's still got all sort of gases swirling into, out around inside mm -hmm. and you're getting the maximum hit of fizziness unbelievable like i yeah. I, I have i i kind of get like uh you know sugar crashes and stuff from time to time it's probably from eating too much sugar but um <laughs> the number one thing that could sort me out would be like an iron brew and when, when back when we used to just drink on a school night you know and go to work the next day be out drinking crazy on a Tuesday, Thursday night, whatever, and nothing to set you right in the morning at work. Just like a can of iron brew, like absolutely uncanny uh, powers of restoration. Mm. Unbelievable. I think, I think an iron brew is never disappointing, and it's almost always better than you think it's going to be. And I think that's a magic to it. Like I think it's like I know what an iron brew tastes like, but if I open one now, I better go. 
Oh man! Every time I have one, yeah. I think it's I think they're it's a magic drink, and I am brew. Um, uh, well, of course, it's the Earn Brew. Whereas I do, you do notice now that some of the much cheaper news agents that are doing the cheaper equivalent, there's a few now haven't there, that have started doing their own, try to do their own knockoff Iron Brew, which they call Iron, I R O N Brew B R. Well, you see, this is E-W. Well, you don't know your history because actually Iron Brew I R O N B R E W was uh, started in America. Um, no. Yep. Yeah, you know, hundred 30 years ago and was became a popular concept around the world an iron brew to make you strong right right and um when bar launched their iron brew it wasn't spelled i-r-n-b-r-u they only did that later so they could copyright it right and also also because there was a thing a crackdown on false advertising and the idea that it would make you iron strong was like that's nonsense so it, it helped it killed two birds with one stone yeah, they didn't create iron brews. They were around, and they were, they're not even a Scottish creation. And there have always been other brand cheapy iron brews. And indeed, like I remember when we used to have a um, soda stream, you could get, for a while, you could get official bars iron brew soda stream syrup, but you could also get generic so, soda stream iron brew. That's really sure. interesting. Because I would say right. that again, none of those, none of those cheaper equivalents are remotely near it. I can see what they're going for, but it's like forget it. And it may be down to the naught point naught naught two percent ammonium ferric citrate that is uh, very much the iron element in it. That you know, people ah. people mock it, but it's it's there naught point naught naught two percent. But when you look up ammonium ferric citrate. On mm-hmm. uh, or citrate, help me out, science dudes. Um, on 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 Wikipedia or something. The main thing it's notable for being used for is in iron brew. So I'm not sure it's like <laughs> it's not really the girders that you uh, you'd use for building your buildings. But yeah, I just I don't know what it is like the the orange and blue and silver. It's incredible yeah. color combo. Incredible, arresting. Well, you please. know when you see like a news agent which has the iron brew awning. Oh yeah. Oh, and you just think that's it. I'm going in that news agent. I'm going in there. Yeah. Iron brew bars. Remember them? Like wham bars, but iron brew flavors. Yes, yes, I do. <sighs> With the crunchy sour lumps in. Oh my god. Love iron Something brew. Something else. Great. I love yeah, I do. I'm really I feel really sport like you like I mean you're drinking your bars, bubblegum drink, but I do like it, especially in London. Like I like the when more and more places are doing it now. They're starting to get a good representation of bars drinks. Yeah. And it used to be like um it almost used to be the sign of a good news agent, I think, if oh, yeah. they stock the bars stuff, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. These guys know what they're doing. Most news agents are run by people who have no idea what they're doing. They don't know what they're ordering. They're not but into like, the product. Um, like no, us. they they're just um oh, news agent would be you know, they're just in it for the money. They're just in it for the money. Yeah. But there's some news agents where you respect them with their selections and you go, totally. well done. So of course some some news agents are small, but all that means is you can you could narrow down what you sell. It's not their fault. If you've got a big news agent, you've got no excuse to have a full range of sweets and drinks. And when they do, I always respect them and think, I'll come back here, Mr. New. This is a good one. This is one of the good news agents. You were talking about being able to get Iron Brew in in pubs and stuff in Scotland, and I'm mm-hmm. sure it's like a kind of uh, distribution conspiracy by um, breweries in the UK that you don't get them in pubs here. Because I read that it's the, still the third biggest selling soft drink in the UK, not just Scotland, but in the UK. But you, the only pubs that ever carried it in London were um, the Scream pubs. Do you remember that? The yellow, yes, yellow pubs, and they'd have it. And when they did an alco alco pop of it, they had that. But they also just had Iron Brew. And I'd always be like, it would always give me real trouble. Because we go into one of those pubs and you'd be like, ah, oh, have a beer, please. And then you'd, be, you'd see the Iron Brew can down in the, in the, in the, in the fridge <laughs> below the bar. And you'd be like, oh, I just want an Iron Brew as well. But they don't go together. It's a bit like the beer no. and chocolate problem I have where I'm like, love chocolate, love beer, but not together. I can't eat That's chocolate good. while drinking beer, you know? And that'd be the same thing. Like, love it. Whereas I could drink a, if I was thirsty, I could drink a Coke and then a beer, no problem. But mm-hmm. Iron Brew is going to really mess up my beer, beer tongue. Beer palate. 
my beer palette's going to be all thrown <laughs> off, you know, it's going to be all out of whack. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, it, it, it's, it's kind of problematic and I don't really like it as a mixer. That's the other thing. All these, you know, you can use yeah. these, these drinks as mixers. I mean, looking at my list, I don't want to mix them with it. Pepsi is fine, but I don't mm. want Lucozade and a gin and Lucozade. No. You know, and Iron Brew and no, Scotch. An That's the crazy thing. Iron Brew and Scotch don't go together. The two great liquid gifts of Scotland. Mm. North Sea oil is quite useful, but I suppose it's more <laughs> the more those two. But um, no, no, not together. Well, this has been, I mean... That, I mean, it's a conclusive number one. Always good to have a conclusive number one, which is right. That means if anyone else has any other top one, it must be wrong. Because we've wrong, now yeah. got a conclusive Iron Brew. It's also great that it's so cheap and it's one that, you know, I mean, kids shouldn't drink fizzy drinks now. Yeah, none but of it's nice that it's the, most, it's the most affordable one. It's still probably quite a nice idea. Um and yeah, so it feels like we've we've nailed it. I thought my choices were, were might be quite controversial, so I'm quite glad that there's been more. There's been been quite a bit of there's been a little bit of controversy uh, between us. But in general, I thought mine might seem a bit wild and crazy. No, no, I'm good. glad that they. Uh... I don't really favour a Mountain Dew, but I I remember its novelty at the time, and it's you know it was exciting. I mean. Tizer, you've really yeah i just totally forgotten about Tizer. i wouldn't have thought of it but of course it's just sitting there on the shelf mm. um i you were talking Tizer about is often what i get oh yeah no, i was going to say Tizer is often what i get when i can't have an iron brew it's almost like to me a Tizer is iron brew light yeah it kind of it's is. like your next best it's got a next similarly best thing. i don't know what that is flavor yes yeah. um you were talking no, about it's... lemonades and if it's a lemonade i do i do probably I used to favor an R whites, mm -hmm. but, um, I don't really like a cloudy lemonade really, unless mm -hmm. I'm in a very folksy setting, you know, like I might have sure. a cloudy lemonade at like a village fate. Sure. That's what it feels like. I'd sometimes get a, a cloudy lemonade to go with an M and S takeaway sandwich. That's right, what it feels yeah. like. If you were attending a street party on <laughs> VE day, <laughs> yeah. you might have a cloudy lemonade sure yeah if i went to wimbledon <laughs> i might i know they don't have a robinson's wouldn't i yeah yeah of course. never mind or champagne actually i'm going back to champagne for that i think and since i've never been to wimbledon i'm going to hold out for champagne with my strawberries and cream um yeah our white's lemonade in the in the effect of that that's bizarre man um where i went to nursery mm -hmm. i told you it was less healthy days well where, where i went to nursery at the the University of London Union in uh, in Bloomsbury because my dad worked at the UCL and I'm I, they had an R White's branded vending machine so I would be allowed a lemonade sometimes and there's pictures of me holding the lemonade I think it's a picture of me even in front of the vending machine because the vending machine you know looked like the can it had that you know it was oh, nice. kind of it was really nice with the stripes and it just looked a fantastic you know glowing yellow and white blue striped machine beautiful thing and um love that but there's no way my kids are getting fizzy drinks <laughs> like at nursery i was at nursery i was like three or four years old like come on but like i'm actually wearing today the uh, university of london day nursery jumper that my dad nice. had at the time because the parents would have to come in and do the lunch break so the pet teachers could have a break so he had to have the branded jumper to show that he wasn't an nonce or something and he kept it and i now i wear it because i think it's the best thing i could wear so it's a bit fraying it's at good the end. i was gonna i think it's where it's held oh yeah i can see that it's got some frayed yeah. edges but still good love it i love this cut of jumper with the diagonal bits there love that yeah lemonade wise i'm a big lemonade fan and r whites is a good lemonade except i found that i don't favor it anymore no, i don't anymore and if i'm gonna either. go for a lemon if i'm going for a lemonade I'll go for a bar's lemonade again, quite sweet. Obviously, you're not really bothered about the sugar. A bar's lemonade's very good. I tell you, a lemonade which is surprisingly good, and it almost feels like I can't tell whether I'm buying it because it's cheap. I can't tell whether it's good value essentially, or whether it's actually really good. Is the uh, budget range uh, Tesco Stockwell's two liter oh, yeah. bottle for seventeen p? 
that's Ooh, I can't tell whether it's I can't tell whether it's just super good value or whether I'm always like struck by how good it is. It's better than a lot of name brand lemonades, I'd say. I'm gonna check that out on a I'll put it in the fridge on a cold day. Like yes, a cold please. lemonade on some ice. I don't really like Schweppes lemonade. I never really have. I've always thought it was mm-hmm. the inferior market leader, you know? Yeah. It's it's because it can get into the pubs. That's how it. That's how it's uh, wheeled, yeah. wheeled its way in. Too it's got, sweet. It's got a way, way into too sweet. pubs. It's like sticky. It's, it's like it's like drinking super glue. Yeah, yeah. Not not a fan. And really, I don't like any of the diet drinks because I don't like the taste of the sweetener. You know, the aspartame. I don't like it. I just I've mm-hmm. never liked that. So pretty much any diet drink like, is out mm-hmm. for me. Like a if someone if if I asked for a coke and I got a diet coke, I wouldn't drink it. Like unless I was like proper gasping. I wouldn't drink it. Interestingly, though, I've said that aspartame is what I use as a sugar alternative in tea and coffee now. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I quite, it works in the way the others I find don't work for me. But to me, um, aspartame does a good job in a, a tea or coffee. But I know what you mean. I mean, I'm not a big diet drink fan in general, which explains a lot. I know, man. Look up to stay of us, like, but, but, yeah. <laughs> I, I really, yeah, I really don't drink the soft drinks this anymore much, but um, I'm all for them, but sort of. Yeah, but, me too. I like. I'm not proud of myself. This episode isn't like I'm not. Oh, this isn't me I'm bragging about. All, like, yeah, I'm not bragging I about it. I, no, I had I'm a not... hangover on Monday because we had a mm-hmm. a dis- socially distanced garden based party, um, for my partner's family on 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 Sunday. And I was one of them kind of drinking all day type affairs. Mm-hmm. I had my hangover in the evening after yeah. it. Went to bed oh, with a that's headache. Nice. Yeah. And then woke up. So on the on the Monday, I wasn't hungover, but I was just incredibly dehydrated. And I had an iron brew on the Monday. And I was like, this is this is living. Like this is <laughs> this is what this is for, you know? Yeah. Like aside from some awful, you know, junk food at 10 a.m that couldn't have gone better than just having the i think i had a packet of crisps actually i think i had a packet of crisps and an iron brew mid-morning i think that will do it i think that's probably about as good as you can actually actually in terms of like medical things i always feel that hangovers are almost like it's the one thing when what your body tells you to do like when you look in a fridge your body goes that one like it's a real like, obvious thing that you're supposed to have it's like a, there's a sixth sense. I think your body knows. Yeah, well, it's like, like it's going. the doctors would be like, paracetamol, caffeine, and a saline drip. Right? That's yeah. what you need. You need salt, caffeine, and get paracetamol. Job done. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, the, we, got, we should we just mention some of the other weird ones, like a dandelion and burdock. I think is disgusting. Can't stand it. But I do rate that it exists. Assuming it still mm. exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can definitely get a dandelion. I don't think there's a a super branded one dmb but anymore i quite like i quite like a dandelion and burdock but it could only have it occasionally it's to me it's the same thing as like um what when um mcdonald's used to do like root beer here and i used to have it because it'd be like one of those things like you hear in american films when you get it it's like oh it just tastes like a dentist oh it tastes yeah, like dentist gross. oh my god I, I remember getting a root beer incorrectly with my happy meal aged about yes. eight or something you know, someone had wrongly pushed the little indentation on the top of the lid down mm-hmm. for Coke when it was actually the root beer indentation that should have been pushed down. And I was like gagging. It was disgusting. <laughs> no, no, no root beer for me. And now people are all like, oh, I like having this Fentiman's root beer. This like six pound bottle of craft root beer. It's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Count me out. I would say, I would say, um, were it a top six? One I think has to be my sort of highest honorable mention is a Rubicon lychee, which I think as a lychee juice is quite tasty. But I think why it belongs it, or would have perhaps deserved a place in the top five is it's one that has a remark that the, the carbonation does something to it, which is like makes it a sort of special drink. You know, mm. it's sort of like, but almost by accident, it's like it should be like this. Like a sort of lychee juice should almost be fizzy, and that's that's a, that's a great drink, a Rubicon lychee. I've never contemplated the the correct state of a lychee juice. Yeah. 
um, my, a bit my, of carbonated lychee. Uh, I rate that my my other half. She's you know an actually healthy adult, mm-hmm. and so she doesn't drink any of these. Actually, do you know what she does? She she does love a, a diet coke, but um, right. The if I have like an iron brew in an extreme circumstance, like the other day, her equivalent. If she's like, oh, I really. I will actually drink a, a fizzy drink. She'll have a lilt, and I don't really like a lilt, but I rate that she, like she has this this lilt weakness. I really, I really rate that about uh-huh. her. I think it's a it's a good thing. And yeah. lilt is like how the mighty have fallen. Like lilt was massive in the nineties. All the Huge. adverts with bad sort of stereotype Jamaican stuff in it, and um, the branding was really strong and modern. And now it's like marketed as a kind of cheap retro looking thing doesn't mm. look good and there's no advertising for it that i can see and yeah it's didn't just... even consider lilt which is a shame because i think it's a i think it's a high card i enjoy a lilt i think that's a good one didn't even think about it i like to imagine uh, they had to pay out a massive amount for their the sun always shine when it pour adverts because it was mm. proved to not be true and they were you know <laughs> fell foul of advertising standards <laughs> uh, where do you stand on something like a cream soda too weird i mean it's weird i i like it and i would have figured you would hate it i think you know it what? is a weird drink it tastes like that to me is weirder than tab clear is like it's it weird that this it's clear really thing really it doesn't weird. really make any sense to me <laughs> i kind of find it how does this work i had a little period of drinking them but i think it was maybe like a week and then mm-hmm. i was like no i'm never gonna do this again yeah i think it was that kind of thing have you ever had like a, a coke float or anything like that like a soda float with yes, ice cream yes yes yeah yeah it's quite exciting yeah. but very yes. weird very exactly weird. i do enjoy i do enjoy one though from time to time um my other one which i think is a strong honorable mention probably my last that hasn't come up uh naturally is vimto yeah i, I thought would have included it. yeah i thought that'd i be would have included it but my thing is, again, controversially, my favorite way to enjoy a Vimto is to have the diluted with water. So my favorite type of Vimto is flat right. and it isn't fizzy. Right. But as a, otherwise, as a cordial. As a cordial. Otherwise, Vimto, yes, please. And another, another good thing is a Vimto with lemonade is a good, uh, Vimto cordial lemonade is a good drink. Do you remember, I don't get the same thing when you go to a kid's party when you're a kid? And they'd be like, would you like lemonade or Coke or Tizer? And one kid would always go, all of them in the same cup. <laughs> and then every kid would go, oh, all of them in the same cup. And then everyone would end up with this like over fizzy just grossness that would like froth over and like get that scum on the top. And they'd be like, yeah. do I have to drink this now? <laughs> I'm talking about that. Again, another thing bars does. But again, I could live without it. No need for it. Is when they go <laughs> orange aid, and you go, "That's not it. That's not like orange aid isn't whatever Fanta is. It's no. just some sort of other like doesn't really work." But they have persevered. I remember another crazy soft drink. Have you ever had this? I've only had it in Austria, and they call it a Spezi. It's like no. Coke and orange. It's like Coke and Fanta mixed together like 50 50. oh yeah sounds gross right so i've only had it when skiing in austria because you know that's that's what i'm like um and but it's like a super sweet kind of hit so again i put it's a bit like on basketball camp it's like it tastes good when you're like tired and you've been out in the snow is it actually good i don't know i'm not going to make it at home Mm, I don't know. Do you know what? I could be convinced. I could be convinced by that. There's that other thing, isn't there, that people say if you like, and it sounds disgusting, but people swear by it is uh, the thing which is half milk, half Coke. Oh, and you yeah, go, that no. sounds horrific. But people go, oh, it's great. Such a great drink. Never had it. No, that's not cool. Although I did used to have Coke shandies sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With beer. Yeah. Nah. Nah, I don't think so. This is going to be like the crisps in beer thing again. Is yeah. what is it like? So it froths up way too much. You have to do a very slow pour. Yeah. Um, 
but the the flavor is quite good. You need a really hey, hey. relatively flavorless beer, like a cheap supermarket own brand lager. Okay. Um, yeah, I used to quite like that. I haven't had that in a long time. It gets a really overly frothy sort of <laughs> foamy head. Uh, I don't even I could, know. I could, I'm, not it. It. I'm not going to recommend it. I'm just saying I did. That is something I I did drink when I was when I was okay. a teenager. But my main go-to that's... drink as a teenager was like Cointreau. So, you know, don't take any advice from teenage me <laughs> on drinking alcohol. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it for my my honourable mentions. I think I've kind of done them all. But yeah, I think they're they're all worth a go. Certainly, if you've never had Rubicon, Lychee Rubicon, that's a good one. I might that's try it. not really sending it to me, but I'll, I'll, I might give it a try. I'm not a big, big sort of exotic fruits-based drink right. one. I like, I like unknowable enigmatic mysterious drinks that have just made of chemicals really yeah it comes to this kind yeah. of thing yeah again it's the yeah i'm not i'm not necessarily proud of of uh uh of my consumption of this stuff i don't think it shows me off to be uh you know uh uh an adult in the world <laughs> but I, I do i do like undeniably i uh i will stick up for this stuff Oh, like I love it. I'm just I'm I'm not claiming to have been adult about it in in mostly giving them up. It's more just that um, um my health is failing. So you know, gotta, gotta, <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe there's a hope, correlation. I've had to let it go so I can stick on the chocolate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let us know what your favourites are. And this, I do think it's something that people hold strike quite, quite strong mm-hmm. opinions about. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of yeah. I feel like mine are controversial, but I suspect my 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 gut instinct in this is that people will have boring opinions, and it will be like classic Coke. It's like sure, that's it. I think it will be a bit like that. I think it won't be too uh, too varied. But you have you can't sit on the fence. Like there's no one no one out there who's going to say I could have either a Coke or a Pepsi, and I and I vary as to which one I'll choose when given the option. I know lots of people don't care and they can't tell the difference, but mm. surely everyone is kind of loyal to one or the other. Mm. If I you go to so. some countries, there's all these other colas. Like yeah, in Germany, you can have like Fritz Cola and Afri Cola and all that kind of thing. There's a lot of kind of alternative options. I know there's one in the, in the Arabic world that's like a, 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 a rival to, to Coca-Cola and stuff, but yeah, I'm, I'm Pepsi guy, really. Although, as a company, they're absolutely terrible, aren't they? So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of not the point. No, no. I mean, yeah, we haven't got into that side of it. Um, and we should point out that this one was chosen by Fran Jolly and Graham Murphy, I believe. That's true. So if you have any uh, top fives you would like us to tackle in the future drop a message in the comments and we'll try to do them if we possibly can yeah i think this is when we need to tick off the list because it's you know people are demanding to know what's what's our take on these things and again we've come up with a with a consensus answer Mm. it's the right answer i just i think it's i think it's by far the best like number two is a long way down from number one unbeatable yeah I think we'll try and link to some uh, classic Iron Brew TV ads on the, on the uh, throughout the week on the Twitter. Yeah, can't be him. The one on the train platform. Yes. Good stuff. Right, it's time for us to to pop off, and uh, I can't think of. I've been quite low on puns this week, but probably merciful news for everybody else. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let us know. Well, your favourites are, and hit us with some more number fives. Number fives? Top fives to do. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.